Excellent. Well, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to have a, it's going to, we're going to do a few things tonight. So, um, I'm, I have enough wisdom to know, um, how the human body works. And <laughs> when you eat a lot of food and you're on the comfortable couches and chairs, the body by default <laughs> gets cut. So I'm, I'm, I know what I'm dealing with. So, <laughs> so what we're going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to share with you a 15 minute um, something just to kind of spiritually fuel us up. Then we're going to move into, we're going to do something where I'm going to put you guys in some groups and then we're going to do an interactive thing. Then we're going to come back and do something else, but everything has a purpose to it. Okay. And I promise it is going to be a blessing to you. So the first thing, um, I wanted to, uh, to share real quick is that, um, under one of your seats, under one of your seats is $20 bill. Whoever find it is yours. The seats that we originally were sitting at are the... <laughs> I'm, I'm like, under, I'm under mine. Hey. And the floor is stuck to the under. Oh, no, no, no. 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 No, Wait, look where I was sitting that kid. <laughs> <laughs> if she if, 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 if she if she give it to you, then she a real friend. Wait, look where I was sitting at. Because my seat was under my side, Maria. Wait, look where that was there. Oh, oh. Is it keep yours? Is it just like it? Yeah, yeah. Making up laughing as we're acting. Okay, real quick, real real quick. Break. I'll, I'll tell y'all where it's at. Just uh, yeah, c- come back to c- <laughs> right. <laughs> See, he, he got, he, he, he got the anointed on him. I realized when I was looking under, I said, I don't think there is. <laughs> now, now, let me ask y'all this. Yeah, now, let me ask you this. Why, when I told you that, what made you look for that? Y'all, some. I wanted it. We trusted your word. Okay, that's good. Now, you trusted my word, but you still had movement. Right. So, you know, you know how we say things like, oh, my leg hurt. I ain't seen nobody leg hurt just a minute ago. <laughs> Everybody was healed. I saw no back pains. Suddenly not tired. Yeah, it was like a, a sudden burst. Well, let me use the word motivation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where did that come from? So now this is going to bring us to show you where we put value. We will not even do that. For our own emotional wholeness, but we would do it for twenty dollars. Wow. <laughs> so when we tell people take time and 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 look for the treasure on the inside, of people, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you died. But for twenty dollars, we almost messed up our house. <laughs> that just shows you how our belief system needs a lot of work. Because I literally, I you, if I could have took a picture. If I could have took a picture of the posture I saw some of y'all, this chair, I don't know how, it was up this way. I saw Maria, Maria, all I saw was her knee under, sticking sticking under that back table. I mean, I'm like. Okay, so just tell me we're about to sell for $20. Well, no, I want to bring a real perspective because I do this every time I do a, 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 when I do a, Speaking, I always use this just to show us how we put so much. You don't do that if you don't value something. Mm. Value makes you make moves and change it. None of y'all felt like getting on your knees. I didn't get on my knees. Yeah, it, it was like something. You know, your spirit came alive. You know. But I'm, but I'm showing you like this is real, these things that I'm showing you is has I'm, it's been a game changer for me. So what I, in my I carry this book all the time uh, because in this book I I is all my honest truths about my belief systems because I had to challenge a lot of things in my life. I had to really go back and start saying the reason why I'm doing certain things is because I see value in it. You don't do stuff if you don't see value in it. It's it's just look at every area of your life that you are. Getting out of the bed and you're doing something, you there's somewhere where the word value is connected to it. That's where movement starts. The areas you're not doing stuff, you're saying, I don't value this. Value makes you move. Oh, wow. 
in any area. <laughs> if you don't value the person you date, trust me, they're going to be like, hey, you want to get together this weekend? You're you going to find every reason. Oh, you know what? I got to walk the dog. <laughs> you know why? Because you don't value that person. So you ain't. But if it's somebody you value, you go be like, um, I can't go to work today. You go start making moves because of the person you value. It's like that in any area. So I always tell people, you can look at your life, the areas that you're moving and shaking, that's where your value is placed. So if you start saying things like, um, it's hard to pray, you don't value that. You don't value the importance of that. If you say it's hard to get up and build a business, you don't value uh, being the head and not the tail. You see what I'm saying? So it really goes back to, so that's what I value. I tell you, for example, um, I'm in the process of trying to get my uh, CDL for, uh, my CDL license for something, a vision God has put in my heart, but I, I want to get that CDL to do it. And, you know, right now to get that, you know, these companies, they pay you, to, you know, they, you work for them and they pay you and you just go. And so me and the gentleman who, who I met at the park, me and he was talking about this morning and he was like, man, why don't you just go here? You know, they'll pay for your CDL, you can train. And I sat there and I had to really look at it. And I said to myself, I do, I, I want the CDL. And I had to be honest and I had to go back to this wonderful book. That's why I gave y'all these little books. I had to go back to this book and say, do I value the CDL more than sacrificing the freedom I have to spend time stocking up every morning? Uh-oh. Because the moment I say yes to this, my stock of time changes. So now I'm weighing two values in front of me. Most people will say, give me the money. I say, you know what? I'll just study the book myself because I value my morning stock up too much to lose that for a one year contract learning and get a CDO, but now I gotta scram time to stock up. Stock up to me is value, so I had to look at that decision and say, I don't know, I'll find another way to get the CDO, but I'm not gonna get, I, you know, I will have to be at work at 6.30 in the morning, that's when I'm in the prime of talking to the Lord. So do I want to sacrifice that? And some people say, well, you can adjust it. I'm talking about for me. I looked at my value and I said, spend a time with the Lord is like finding $20 under the seat. <laughs> so something else will have to sacrifice. And most people ain't willing to make that. When people do things like that, it seems like God sometimes opens doors for them because he says, wow, you love me. You value me so much that you are putting me, spending time with me above these earthly things or whatever. And that's when God sometimes will let somebody call you. <laughs> you were just on my heart. What's your cash app? And you be like, oh, oh, thank you. And then all of a sudden you see like $3,000 in your cash app. And you're like, what just happened? It's because he's honoring your value. So he's after value. So the re the, this session we're going to talk about today is getting us back to prioritizing our values because your values is really going, is really going to tell you where you are in life today. 2021, October 29th, you have a value system and everything you get up to do every day, you value in it. Whether you say I hate it or not, you're valuing it because you're going. You can't say I hate it and, you know, and then go to the thing. It's like, you know, it's, it's like a person say, you know, I hate smoking. <sighs> I hate it. I just can't stand smoking. <laughs> you can say that all you want. You value that cigarette. <laughs> that cigarette got enough value that you hate it so much that you can't stop putting it down. So value really tells you where your heart is. So one of the things that humbled me back in 2012 when I was really making this transformation for myself, I didn't know I was going to do transformation clubs and stuff like that. So this is the reason why I'm so passionate about teaching others, because I did see what happened to me. I had value. And, and somebody take a guess of what you thought what my value was. Materials. It wasn't money. Um, it wasn't material. Um, Open can you clarify that question specifically yes. more as to um, the time frame of of when you're of what you were valuing, like what you asked and what we were valuing? How long? How long I was valuing that, time that thing? Period or what time frame? Like uh, twenty now versus then? Or um, it, this was twenty twelve. Okay, from, from that time. From twenty uh, twenty twelve is when I started making the transformation. So around twenty twelve, there were certain things that I valued. Oh that brought me to where you, the guy you see today. 
where I began to ch start writing things. I had to start looking at things because when this thing began to shift, my whole life shifted with that thing. So I want to see if any of y'all can guess what that was. Um, I I prayed. I definitely gave God my time, but there was still something else I valued. I, I was saved, loved God, spent time with him, but there was still something else I placed on value, meaning when this thing came up, I'll tell God I'll pray later. Oh, time? Oh, um, oh wow. Well. Not that somebody's getting, y'all getting close, though. Friends. Give us close. another clue. <laughs> <laughs> my value was in what I did for others oh, oh. Okay. my value was man I get to do this so I can be a help to people this has nothing to do with my relationship with God it's, the, it's finding satisfaction in doing this thing for people so back so then he was doing the singles motivational I was I was doing singles ministries cruises yes, writing no, books no, yeah. so I was but it was it was good God was happy with it but I didn't if if you, if if I got yes the value of helping others before God yes so then that would be like we can set up idols you, you guys are yes, that's why y'all so amazing <laughs> now I'm the funny thing was this is good stuff so you would say what's wrong with that I was in my, I'm, I'm doing my thing. So to everybody, it's like, yes, this is what, but there was something nobody else saw that when it was time for me to look for my $20, when the Lord say, come, come meet with me to get their $20, I would be like, Lord, I'm just, this bed feels so comfortable. <laughs> but when my real $20 call, hey, we need you to come speak this weekend. We need you to go speak at six in the morning. I would be on my knees like y'all. <laughs> I would make the time to be at the airport. So I had to look at that and say, and one day I got so convicted. It got so bad to where when I, I began to put my value in what I did for God and not being connected to him. It was more like a person saying, I'm going to heaven because I go to church. Right. Eating God's glory. Absolutely. And so and, and please, I'm not saying this to make anybody. I'm not saying this. I'm just sharing my story because 2012 was I was in the prime of what I was doing. I've never traveled so much. It was like I was getting booked for every weekend. So my value went into that. And I found myself spending less time stocking up. So one time in that pop popular season of mine, I had a burnout, a spiritual burnout that I didn't tell too many people about. And that spiritual burnout came, and my nephew probably will understand this because we have talked about it, is because I began to try to operate apart from my protection. So this is going to bring us to this session tonight. Again, it's only going to be about 10 more minutes, and then we're going to go to the next thing. So the temperature is dropping outside. Everybody came here with jackets tonight. Thank you for doing that. What would happen if you left your jacket at home and came outside with no jacket? My hair would have been curly. <laughs> 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 they say none of our eyes are late. Right. She went right to the hair. <laughs> but, but I got you. I got you. You would have got sick. Instantly. Why would you have got instantly, instantly sick? Because of the, oh, my body can't deal with that external temperature Ooh. of extreme temperature. Ooh. Changes the temperature. Now, y'all see how clear... She is about that. Who, ra raise your hand if you feel like you have a supernatural flesh that can that can stand out in this weather with no jacket in the winter. So all of <laughs> so all of us is clear that <laughs> all of us is clear that these bodies ain't designed to make it yeah. apart from protection, right? So this is what the Lord showed me. So let me read y'all the scripture, then I'm gonna show y'all something, and then we go let you guys go in some groups. All right, so I'm gonna read. Romans chapter 13. This thing's just been a game changer for me. Romans 13. You got your little books. So these are things you want to hold on to. Those, these books for y'all take as many nuggets. This, is the, this, is, this little book is going to be the thing. I, I, I originally had a bigger one, but I said, nope. I want y'all to have something that's smaller you can put in your pocket. 
take it out, you know, while you're at work, whatever, just look at it. So I wanted it small on purpose so you can carry it every day. Uh, Romans 13 and 14 says, uh, I'm sorry, Romans 13 and 11 says this. It says, and do this. I'm reading the NIV. Understand the present time. The hour has already come for you to wake up from your sleep because our salvation is nearer now than we first believed. Verse 12, the night is, is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Verse 13, let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in corrosing and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality, debauchery. Now watch this, not in dissension and jealousy. Verse 14 says, rather clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Jesus. Now watch this. He says, clothe, put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. So the revelation God gave me one day in prayer was the reason why many people is having struggles is because they're going outside without their jackets. So I brought my jacket here. My Lord. So this jacket is, I want y'all to see this jacket as Jesus. Now the cool thing about this is I wrote a couple of words down. You got some joy. You got some peace here. Okay. We got love. Okay. We can put a little bit of that. Some self-control. Right. Oh, yeah. We got some faith. Now watch this. Now, I feel good. I feel warm. I feel protected. You know, so if it's no outside, I'm good. I don't feel... You know, faith ran away. But <laughs> <laughs> I think the door, I think I need a little more prayer in that area. Wanda. But um, <laughs> all right. So watch this. So I'm protected. I can go outside, go to my car right now in that condition and feel protected because the body that I have I normally carry is not con is not built to handle that. So watch what happens here. So I take this off. We're inside. So I can take, you know, I'm taking it off. I'm comfortable now. I'm like, okay. So the devil says, go to your car, grab this, 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 this. And the average person, because you think you're supposed to have love by yourself. You're supposed to have your own peace. You're supposed to have your own joy. And your body, you're not designed to do that on your own. So in order to have it, guess who you got to carry? So where is all your power? In Jesus. Not in me. I don't have. I was hoping somebody would tell me, you know, give me a little credit here. Uh -oh. You don't think you, you don't think I can you don't think I can produce my own peace? Nope. Not my own joy. Now. Come on. <laughs> but I pray. I'm trying. I I I go to church. You need your coat. <sighs> But I, I understand the cope. I don't, I don't feel like going and putting it on. I mean, come on. I, I don't, it's easier for me to just go like this outside. It's easier. And then when I come in and I start going, right. now all of a sudden the devil busy. <laughs> <laughs> now we want it after we're sneezing. After, wow. So when it says put ye on the Lord Jesus, how many days a week should you go out the house without your coat? So why are we skipping stocking up? You're going outside every day because you're not built to face some demons out there by yourself. That's why you're struggling. That's why it's like a why this week I'm strong. Why this week I'm not? It's because the week you're not, you went outside thinking, oh, I've built a head on this elements. I can handle the snow. And now you're not that cold outside. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. We always underestimate. I've made the mistake. Sometimes I just go in the backyard to put something in the garbage in the snow, and I'm like, why did I just do that? Yeah. I, as soon as I go outside, immediately it hit me like, I should not be out here without my head covered. So when Paul tells them to put you on the Lord Jesus, Paul is very clear. You don't have your own righteousness. 
please get out your head that y that body of yours got righteousness. You don't have it. So the quicker you get that understanding, you're going to be so glad to put that on. This becomes your go-to. I, I, so, so tonight, we're going to do a little test. When you leave here tonight, you got to leave your jacket here in Natasha's house. But so so now let's dialogue about this because now we're starting to understand in the physical that we are on autopilot. Everybody in here would not leave here without grabbing their coat. Why are we so disciplined in that area? Why do we know how to do that? Nobody got to tell us to do it. We don't need a club to tell us to put a coat on. Huh? We know the consequences. We've been here long enough. Right. It's cold outside. You tired of being sick? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we can see the season. You can see the season. It's a routine. It's it's a routine. An element of being taught, though. Okay. There was an element of being taught initially because we have our parents teaching us. We got to put your jacket on. You got to do this, that, and the third. So it clearly that developed into part of our inner. Mm -hmm. Mm. Core and our inner. Got it. Mm. So how did so so all the years we've had all been to church, spiritual and our spiritual parents been telling us to pray and stuff. Some of us is in our forties, thirties, fifties, sixties, and we still don't know how to put our spiritual coats on. What do you think has happened to us? <laughs> well, I well part I don't know, but I think all of us have st started at a different level of teaching. Like we came in at a at different phases of our lives to begin with, first of all, and then second of all, um, sometimes it's, we got good teachers and we got bad teachers, like a regular public school system. So good. some people know how to represent the, the core teachings and sometimes, you know, there's, I don't know, I guess you could say common core where they don't teach you to think and then there's the other ones that teach you to think. Good. So raise your hand here if you know that you need to pray. So nobody here had no excuse. We all got good teachers. So why don't we, why do we, why are we skipping on days? Because sometimes we don't know what to pray for. I think it's emotional. The Bible says it very clearly. Okay, so let's talk about that. So let's, let's connect this to coats. <laughs> do we not put our coat on because we're unsure of the material? Or do we just, we put it on based on the fact that I need it. We don't dive into if it's wool. We don't be reading labels talking about oh, what, should I go right arm first? Left? You see, you see what's happening. We just put the we sometimes just put it on our show because we know we need it. What we're trying to do now is intellectualize why we don't really pray. We don't even do that when it comes to that. We don't even really think too much. We know we need it. We put it on. We we our instincts kick in when we know there's value somewhere. And this is why I'm trying to get to see that the reason why most people struggle in the area of their soul is because they don't put the value on the jacket. I promise you, you go learn how to put your own jacket on when you see value in the jacket. I, I will put my life on it. <laughs> see, 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 see that? That's a side of not wearing your jacket. No, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding, Maria. I'm, I'm, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing you. I'm going to get your question in a second. So if you have questions, write it down because I'm going to give you guys time to ask some questions. But I want you to hear this real quick because then we're, we're about to break to our next thing. So you got to ask yourself, do you value? Do you really see? Because I know we say it. But remember, value will always be demonstrated and seen. That's why I said, I said to myself, I know everybody in this room value $20. I'm, I was, you know what I was really looking for? I was looking for the person who wouldn't move. <laughs> and I couldn't find one. I thought he moved. I mean, he didn't move because he was like... Oh, he, he, he budged a little. He, he, he moved a couple of pillows. Don't, <laughs> don't, let, don't, let, don't let him feel you. Yeah. That's movement. Everybody yeah. Like that. he, he, yeah. <laughs> it was a, everybody in here. <laughs> everybody in here has some... Like, sim mine. Yeah, every, everybody moved in some way. Because in your mind, $20 is connected to value. That is a principle. The moment you see value in that jacket, I will put my life in it. I will never, your pastor, your friend, you don't need nobody to text you. I promise you, you will make time for the Lord every day. You ain't gonna have, your job ain't even gonna stop you. How many of you was about to run out the door to your job and said, oh, I left my jacket and went back in the house to get the jacket 
and didn't care if you were two minutes late because you needed that jacket. But now we come to prayer. I'll, I'll, I'll hit the Lord up later. Mm, I think it's the way we feel. Our bodies don't feel like the flesh don't, don't want to do it. Period. Somebody, okay. Let, let, get, that's why they say you got to get stronger in your spirit so you can be able to do it. So my question is, yeah. I don't feel like putting this on. It has nothing to do with feelings. I, I, I'm, and I'm challenging y'all tonight to, to really look at these feelings that we talk about. Because there's a lot of stuff we do that we don't feel like doing. And we do it faithfully. Really good. I'm telling you, I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like putting my right arm in here first. I don't feel like doing that every time. I really don't. I just want to just. just. <laughs> so feelings really have no excuse. Of, I still end up with this thing on. So whether I feel like it or not, the coat is still on me. So that means I made a decision, not how I felt. I made a decision based on value. Okay? I, I, I'm, and that's a secret for a second. Value makes you move. I, I have to say that again. Value is going to make you move. If you don't value, you, if you are, look at an area of your life that you're stuck right now, you don't value something. It's a, if y'all valued that food, you would have got out your seat and went up and got the food because you valued it. Everybody looked like they got up <laughs> in some way. But if you didn't value food, you would have been like, um. so value is, so if you look, I, I kid you not, that was a game changer for me. So what I did was I said, okay, Lord, and I had to be honest. I hate to admit it, but I was very honest in 2012. And I said, okay, I'm doing a lot of great things for you, Lord. I will feel his anointing. He blessed me. But I had to be honest with him. I said, you know what? I really don't value. I'm, I'm kind of ashamed to say what I'm about to say, but I'm going to say it so y'all can know that I'm human. I kind of didn't value his opinion. So let me give you, let me explain that. He says, pray for your enemies. <laughs> there was some stuff I valued, but that one, I was like, yeah, that one was like, okay, but that one, I don't know. I like the mother ones, but that one, I, I don't, I don't have that much value yet on that particular one. So that one, I was kind of stubborn and then, you know, it took a minute, you know, but I began to value. Now watch this. Somebody answer, why do you think now that I can pray for my enemies? Because you value his opinion. You are the bomb. It has nothing to do with my feelings. You see that? Because I, I still don't feel like praying for my enemy. But that's why I'm doing it. It's funny you brought that one up, though. <laughs> oh, Jesus, though. <laughs> She's ready to testify. <laughs> but, 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 I'm, but I'm showing y'all the difference between. So at the end of the day, including myself, we can all admit that we have just been making excuses. It, that's, it boils down to everything we're saying, I don't feel like, it's really excuses. And we have, I've learned that the quicker I said I'm making an excuse, I keep using this, it has always kept me stuck. Until I got to the place, I woke up one day, I was like, you know what, I'm going to do some things differently. I said, I'm going to make sure I wear my jacket every day. Now I, it's like, I love what Jerome said, it's so second nature that if I don't wear it, I know something's wrong. I actually feel everything else have to wait for my jacket. Okay. It's not, um, I think I, I'll put the jacket on in the car. Oh, I'll put it on when I get to the office. No, no. Everything, I'm not leaving the house till I put it on. Because I'm not sure what I'm about to face in the elements. Hmm. Where are we such in a rush? You know, you get up, and, okay, you're just thinking about what your day is going to be, and it's like, and you forget to really just stop and say, wait a minute. Because mm -hmm. let me tell you, there's been times where I'm like, I, I, I get up and I, but then the days that I do stock up, it's just a totally different, <coughs> I'm like, wow, that stock up is, I've met, I've, and so we started, like, I see this stock up so valuable, it's just, mm -hmm. it's a really it changes your day it really does and, and that's the that's the thing i'm trying to see we're going to talk about uh, um after we do our uh we're going to split up because 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 we got to deal with something our belief systems and we've been talking about that is really getting us in a lot of trouble our belief system we're believing stuff that's not true a lot of us really believe things about us that is really not true the problem is you don't have nobody to tell you that it's not true 
So you're just left to your own belief. You're just walking around believing something that is totally not true until somebody come and tell you, you know what, you're, you're really not this. And you're like, really? So somebody has to tell you, that that's why the Bible says the truth shall make you free. Because when you know the truth about yourself, you start to realize, why was I living like that? That's what happened with the woman with the issue of blood. That's what happened with the woman at the well. They got truth. And that's why the, so much truth, the lady left her water pot. She was like, I don't even need this thing no more. So when truth hits you, you start to realize, why, why am I acting stupid? Why am I lazy? Why am I procrastinating? Why am I so afraid to take a risk? Why am I so afraid to pray? Why am I so afraid to cry? Why am I so afraid to, uh, to take this next step? You start to ask yourself these questions and then it'll all go back to nobody stopping you. It's, this is what you're doing to yourself. And when you look at that, so I'm telling y'all right now, I had to overcome a lot of negative beliefs. And one of the things that made me that changed me was the devil used to tell me, oh, you can never, you can never in that body, you can never, you know, live like Christ and you can never be a man of God. You can never live a holy life. I heard that. And, and from my understanding, I was like, yeah, that's true. I, that can't happen. But what the devil didn't tell me. <laughs> I can do all things with my jacket. He ain't tell me that part. So he did tell me a partial truth, which was I can't because I couldn't without this. He just left this part out. <laughs> That's why I kept living my life trying to have joy without this. Good relationships without this. Love myself without this. I'm like, it ain't working. So every two weeks I was depressed, <laughs> every, <laughs> constantly go up for prayer. <laughs> I need more holy oil than, than the, 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 all the, the grease at Popeye's chicken. <laughs> I'm just like a mess because I was lied to until I realized, ah, oh, this. So th somebody tell me where, what is the area? What's the only area I need to focus my choices So if I had, if there's one thing I need to be committed to do every day, what is that? Stocking up. Stocking up. But watch this. So should I put, yeah, all right. So watch this. So should I spend all my energy trying to be a more loving person? No. Should I spend most of my day trying to have peace? No. no. So what should I be spending my day doing? Pray. Stocking up. Communion. Communion from the one who only can give it to us, basically. Listen, the value is there. Everything I'm trying to do to be a better person is in that coat. Mm -hmm. So what should I be committed to doing every day? Putting keeping on your coat. Putting on your coat. Wait, what did you say? Oh, keeping it out. Oh, <laughs> so. That's kind of so yes. Too, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I've, I've got you. Know, y'all ain't want to see that part. You know, I'm just kidding. But, but watch this. So as t the, the secret to transformation is not, okay, I'm just going to be a better person. I'm just going to smile more. I'm just going to uh, just, the secret is so simple that that's why we're missing it. Mm. It's so simple that Jesus is sitting up there in heaven like, what is wrong with these people? <laughs> <laughs> I went to the cross. I got all the righteousness the person needs in the jacket and they won't put the jacket on. So we over here praying, shouting, running around churches, jumping off lamps, and the, and the jacket is sitting on the floor. And when we get done shouting, we go right back to acting crazy. <laughs> and we like, well, what is wrong with me? <laughs> I can clearly see what's wrong. <laughs> so what is our, so I'm giving you a proactive thing to do, but you got to see the value in that. If you don't see the value in this, guess what you're going to do? You'll, you're going to leave here tonight. Wow, that was nice. Well, that was a good word. And guess what? You go still leave your jacket on the floor. And there's going to be no change. So the change comes when every day you walk past that, that, the, the hanger and say, all right, come on, jacket. You got my peace today. You got my protection today. You got my love today. So I do this every day. And I, 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 me and my wife will be married about three years. So every day I get up and I always tell God, I say, I say, you know, before my wife, I see my wife, I say, Lord, I got to put my coat on because when she comes down the stairs, I want her to have this. 
not this. Because if she comes down the stairs and get this without this, she go get fear, insecurity. You see what's happening? She's going to get this part. And this part is not built to do nothing without the jacket. So the secret is, let me just put the jacket on. So when she comes down the stairs, she be like, babe, you want some coffee? I, there's so much love coming off of me. Because guess whose love is it I'm using? Yeah, I'll have a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why I'm afraid. I said, I don't know if I'm willing to compromise. And, and for some of us, it may take us 30 minutes to go like this. Some of you, you know, some of us, it may take us a minute to, you know, we can't find that other arm, you know. We, <laughs> we like this, you know. <laughs> what is going on? It may take you that long. But long as you get it on before you leave the house, who cares? Some of us, we know it so well, we just, but some of us, we need a little more time. It take us 10 minutes to put our right arm. Did we take a breather? <laughs> then, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'd rather you fall asleep with one one arm through that thing. Yeah, at least you got half. At least you got some half of love. <laughs> so I'm just showing you this: that from today, stop trying to be righteous by yourself. It, you're killing yourself. This is this is why you, you feel the burnout. This is why you feel one day you can tackle demons, and next day you run from demons. You know, <laughs> one day you you over your you 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 got control over any uh, any emotional wounds, and then the next day it's just like man, they beating you up. It's be so Jesus really did all that stuff, guys, for us to put him on. That's why Romans says, "Put ye on the Lord Jesus." I hope this helped you guys. To start stereo up. So that is number. That's session number one to get us going. Now the the next part. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna break you guys up and 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 let me see one two three four five six seven eight nine. Did you want you want to be a part two, babe? Please, <laughs> the first lady of the club. <laughs> yeah. So we'll we'll put our, our wife as I. So we're gonna put you guys in groups of five. So it's gonna be two groups. And what you're gonna do? You're gonna write down in that little notebook. How you see yourself. Now, please don't lie. Because, <laughs> you know, we like to do it. Don't lie. Just write down what, how you see yourself, right? And then what you're going to do in that group, everybody has to tell you what they think about you. Then look at your thing and tell me if it match. Because you're going to be shocked at how you have been seeing yourself all this time. And when you see how other people look at you, you're going to be like, really? Y'all see that of me? Because somebody got to challenge you and make you believe that you are probably seeing yourself completely distorted. So this is why we got to start looking. That's why I, I gave you this, because I need you guys to start realizing from the day forward. Put all of your any righteousness you see, any love you see, any peace, self-control, temperance, goodness. All of that is in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All you got to do is put him on every day. And guess what you got automatically? All of those things. The moment you try to do it about the coat, you go struggle. I always tell people this. You know that you, 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 we should look, this is what the believers should look like. <laughs> you know, I can tell, I, I use, I don't know where this analogy came from, but it, it makes sense. Uh, I don't want nobody in this room to look like a bird driving a car. That was crazy. <laughs> if you go outside and see a bird driving the car, something is really wrong with that picture. Do you see? You look at my sister's face. You, you see that look on her face? Like, I can't imagine that. Right. That's how it looks when you're walking without your jacket. You are a bird driving a car. You was not designed to drive a car. You designed to fly. And you know that you're a bird driving a truck when you're so frustrated every day. When you just you don't have no pay, when you feel like there is no fruits of the spirit operating, you are a bird behind a car. And the way you know that you are uh, wearing your jacket, you just soaring and flying because you were made that way. <laughs> That's one of them old school folks. That's one of them old school rings. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is this is how you got to know. All right. So in this in this part that we're going to do now, now we're going to give you guys about 20 minutes in this part. All right. So, again, you're going to have a couple of minutes just to write down how you see yourself. Write down three things that you see about yourself. All right. What would that look like? 
confident, um, you could put insecure, need help. Nobody's going to see your list. So be honest. Nobody will see your list. So be as honest as possible. But then let everybody else tell you what they see. And you guys are going to go around to everybody. Okay. Father, I pray right now that everybody who listened to the session, God, I pray that we will be committed to wearing our jackets every day. Lord, we're tired of trying to do this thing in our own stream. You, you, you have never made us to try to live this thing apart from you. Your word is clear. Without you, we could do nothing. And Lord God, so we have made a very, very clear. We're making a decision to put our hands through the, through the sleeves of the coat. We ain't going by how we feel. We know we need you. We put value on the jacket. So today, no more excuse. We're not making no more excuses about how we feel about prayer. We're not making no more excuses about how, how we feel about spending time with you. We know our value comes from that. So we're not going to sit there and just keep and let the TV. We're not going to let our cell phones and we're not going to let our jobs rob us from wearing our jacket. So, God, we make a conscious decision that we're going to commit to this and in that we're going to feel love in that we're going to feel peace in that we're going to feel our identity and that we're going to feel the goodness, your fruits of the spirit. So we praise you. We thank you so much. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.